Good morning. YouTube and Facebook Live viewers, blessed Easter to you. We're so glad to have you with us on this beautiful April 4th morning. We begin our service now. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We thank you, risen Christ, for the water of our baptism, where you made us new, leading us from the death to life, from tears to joy. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uh, for our first Easter hymn, it's uh, LBW 151. If you have a hymn on your car, or if you're looking at your bulletin, it's on page three. And I'm sure you, those of you online, if you Google Jesus Christ has risen today, you'll see the lyrics and we'll sing all four verses.
Psalm 118, verse 24. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our Easter gospel reading for this morning is from Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, where the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the tomb of the entrance? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Alleluia, the Lord is risen, he is risen indeed. If only we had heard those or similar words in our gospel reading for today. The resurrection of Jesus is announced but the immediate reactions by the women are alarm, terror, and fear. Instead of receiving an empty tomb with hope, they ran from the tomb as fast as they could, saying nothing to anyone. I think you'll agree with me that fear and silence are not the most effective ways to end Jesus' resurrection story. Did you catch that? I just said this reading is the end of Mark's gospel. And I know somebody out there here or online is saying, but Pastor, my Bible ends with verse 20, not verse 8 in Mark's 16th chapter. Well, I'll let you in on a piece of Bible trivia to amaze your family and friends at Easter dinner today. Scholars agree that a second century scribe intentionally added happy ending verses to Mark's gospel because of its awkward, abrupt ending. I guess that original ending seemed more like bad news than good news. So the scribe added 12 additional verses that delivers a totally, totally different ending the Jesus resurrection story and Mark's gospel. Mark says in those verses, Jesus appeared to his disciples and told them to go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. Then the Lord Jesus was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and proclaimed the good news everywhere. Have a nice day. I added that part. And really, and very seriously, that's the way we expect an Easter gospel to end, isn't it? That's the promise we came to church expecting, needing, longing to hear proclaimed on this festive Sunday. You might say it's the promise we've been yearning to hear and celebrate after a year-long journey through a pandemic of deaths, job losses, home foreclosures, food shortages, and toilet paper shortages, mental health issues, family pressures, and simply being stressed out. But Mark's unfinished and awkward ending kind of matches our awkward and unresolved mix of fear and possibilities, living with a relentless virus that has yet to end. 
Besides the incredible, unbelievable number of hospitalizations and deaths, there are parts of our lives that are in an awkward, unresolved pandemic limbo, like our job, or our marriage, or our health. This awkwardness is true for our church ministries as well. I was thinking back on the last year, and I can name a dozen things or more that are awkward, but I was thinking, well, we had to delay our 225th church anniversary last May, and we still don't have a date and time to reschedule it. Our physical three-mile fun run for Sea Park became a virtual internet Facebook fundraiser. And there was an Ash Wednesday without ashes. My most awkward moment, and I had a lot of them, <laughs> was one day preaching into my laptop camera at home. When out of the corner of my eye, I noticed on my phone, which had the Facebook Live service, I noticed I wasn't on Facebook Live. And instead I saw Kelsey speaking. I stopped in the middle of my sermon. I had been preaching for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, and nobody was hearing me. <laughs> I was dropped from the internet. And just as I was preaching, I thought, wow, well, that's awkward. But Kelsey saved the day and read my sermon nuggets. Thank you again, Kelsey. You know, and if someone had suggested an outside 2021 Easter coffee hour and service Let's say way back in 2018, you would think it was an April Fool's joke. By the way, Easter in 2018 was April Fool's Day. But let's step back, take a deep breath, and look at the people mentioned in Mark's awkward Easter gospel for some insight and inspiration into our awkward lives. Now, first notice that ironically the 12 disciples are not at the tomb when push came to shove these disciples betrayed jesus or denied him or just plain ran from his presence the moment the soldiers showed up but mary magdalene and the other mary and salome who were some of jesus most faithful followers up to this point followed jesus all the way to the cross until Jesus drew his last breath. And they watch silently as Joseph of Arimathea takes Jesus' crucified body off the cross and wrapped it in a linen cloth for burial. And we can only assume that the women from kind of formed their own kind of funeral procession as Joseph takes Jesus dead body to the family tomb. And then on that first Easter morning, the day after the Sabbath, those same women feel called to continue their care and devotion of Jesus just one more time. So they get up early, bring the appropriate burial spices, and slowly begin their walk to the tomb. Steeped in grief, they forget about how they're going to roll away that huge heavy stone in front of the tomb and afterwards they may have been saying to each other well now we can go back to life as usual instead the women discover a young man in a white robe in the empty tomb instead of jesus they simply couldn't comprehend what just happened so they fearfully flee from the tomb in silence and life from then on would be anything but normal. Somehow their fear eventually becomes courage. And as a community of faith, they depend on Jesus' early words of his teaching and his preaching with that promise that they too would be resurrected one day. And that news entrusted to them in the tomb, well, they must have eventually shared it in faith and a joy that Jesus was raised from the dead. And their courage becomes hope, and they share the Easter story with others. 
They are witnesses to the resurrection, even during difficult times. And sharing that does make a difference in other people's lives. And the church grew. They have become Easter people with their grief transformed into joy. So, how do we see ourselves as Jesus' disciples in these times of uncertainty and awkwardness that we live in? You know, pandemics are both catastrophes and opportunities to do ministry during difficult times. You just have to look at us outside. But I thought I'd share with you a story I heard, uh, actually read, April 1st on Penn Live. It's about Pastor Chris Sledge of the Journey Church in Harrisburg. When students were displaced by the Harrisburg School District because they switched to a virtual learning last March, the church saw an opportunity to reach out to the youngest and the most vulnerable of its neighbors. <coughs> The pastor explained, we couldn't worship here, we couldn't sing here, but the church was bold enough to say, let's open up our space. The ministry is bigger than a service on Sunday. So they hosted 15 students, just one of them a church member, in its basement classroom, where they had access to a school-provided breakfast and lunch, along with adult supervision by church volunteers, internet access, and socially distant desk space, up to eight hours a day. God bless them. In all the perils and awkwardness of life, we too are Easter people, and we're called to be creative and resilient during this pandemic because we are the ones still charged with proclaiming the gospel in words and our actions. Jesus was not just raised, but he is risen and still on the loose in our world, in our time, and in our lives right now. And because Jesus lives, we have more of Jesus' story to share. And it doesn't really have to be done in big, exaggerated ways. While taking May back home, Ginger used the time of traveling in the car to tell her granddaughter all about Holy Week. Ours is not a morbid faith, but a living one. With Jesus' resurrection, there's no more fear or silence as we are formed and sustained by the Easter joy we share. That means our grief will also turn to joy. In a life with Christ, no matter how awkward our circumstances, his death brings us life and his resurrection brings us hope. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. At this time, Kyle's going to bless us with a song from his heart.
ask us to do something a little different. Okay. We're going to worship together. That's not just going to be me singing. Okay. All right. So I'm going to sing a part of the chorus, and I want you to sing it back to me. Uh, and that's how we're going to get everybody together. I mean, this is a good day, right? Right. This is a good day. It's a day to sing. It's a day to celebrate. I know different people worship in different ways. Uh, so if you don't feel called to sing, worship in your own way. Uh, but I, how great would it be to get a groundswell of worship here today, right? Right. All right. So it's very easy to follow along. This is how it goes. Mm -hmm. I, <clears throat> I am free to run. Now you. I am free to run. I am free to dance. I am free to live for you. I am free. 
I am free to dance. I am free to live for you. I am free. One more. I am free to run. I am free to dance. I am free to live for you. I'm free to live for you. I said to Kyle, I'll be uh, humming those verses all day today. Let us pray. Let us rejoice in Christ's resurrection, offering our prayers to God for all in any need. Please join me after each petition with the Easter response, Christ is risen indeed. We praise you for the gift of the global church, for all the newly baptized around the world, and the spirit of the resurrection into our assembly. And we pray for the joy in one another and hope in the face of sorrow. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We praise you for the food that you provide, and we pray for everyone who is hungry. Show us how to meet the needs of the hungry in our world. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We praise you for the availability of vaccines and pray for everyone who is still contracting the coronavirus and pray for healthcare workers and for all who have lost family, friends, and livelihood. We store health throughout the world. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We praise you for each day of health and well-being, and we pray for everyone who suffers from illness of any kind, for those who today will die, and for those who we now name aloud before you or in our hearts. Accompany all who face troubles and sorrows, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We praise you for the presence of the risen Christ among us and for the witness of all who have died in the faith. And we pray that at the end of all things, you will raise us with all the saints to rejoice in your presence forever. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. In thanksgiving for the new life of the resurrection, we raise these prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our last Easter hymn for today is LBW 143, or on page four of your bulletin, Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds. I think you'll also find that on the internet. Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds, and we'll sing all four verses.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. As if we are the women seeing the empty tomb, go in peace and share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.